This video is sponsored by Squarespace. So we're gonna go here, we're gonna draw this, we're gonna bring it back here, and we're gonna turn it into this. Every stroke in this video. Welcome back to the studio. If you're new, I'm Slu. We're in the studio. I love to do master copies. I've done quite a few over the years. They're just good practice. They're fun things to do, especially when you go to the Met and you see the painting in real life and then you get to copy it. That's what I did a few weeks ago. If you've seen my previous videos, actually two videos I've done drawing at the Met, really good time. You should check those videos out. But I purposely brought my oil painting sketchbook to the Met so I could do a little sketch of a Rembrandt painting to then bring back to the studio where we are now to paint it. Um, this is called The Auctioneer by Rembrandt and I realized after I drew um, the sketch at the Met that this was actually not done by Rembrandt himself, it was done by his pupils. He had this big studio, so this from the history, history books or whoever owned the painting deduced that it was not by Rembrandt himself but some of his disciples. But still equally amazing, really fun painting, just a quick portrait I'm doing in my oil painting sketchbook. You could see that I changed it a little. I worked on it a teeny bit more once back in the studio to nail down the proportions so that I could start painting. It's mostly just the portrait I'm looking at. I'm not doing the, you know, really complex technique that Rembrandt probably did and other people who have now made videos about like a whole grisaille, um, black and white layer and then doing small little tints and glazes over it. I'm just going a la prima trying to, you know, just capture color and value. And I think it's just a fun experience. So that's the video. We're gonna go through every step and I'm gonna do sort of a live action demo. Obviously it will be edited so it's fast and smooth, but I'm just gonna talk, talk it out throughout the whole process. So I've already lined up some colors. We're gonna use the Zorn palette because I like to limit myself. It's good practice. Also I haven't used the Zorn palette in a minute. It's titanium white, yellow ochre, cadmium red light, and ivory black. So four colors, you could basically make every color in the spectrum. I've mixed a few colors, just a couple combinations to get the ball rolling, but we're just gonna absolutely dive in here and have a blast. Before we go through every step of this painting, I wanna talk about the sponsor of today's video, which is Squarespace. If you haven't heard of Squarespace before, that is shocking. It's an all-in-one website building platform and is by far the most efficient and useful tool for fine artists, small businesses. They've made it as easy as possible to make a beautiful and engaging website with award-winning templates, as well as 24-hour customer service. Specifically, they have amazing portfolio templates to showcase artwork in a gallery setting. Squarespace has also really cool third-party extensions that can really boost up the strength of your website. For e-commerce capabilities, they have vetted dropshipping companies and amazing tools to really optimize anything you need to do online. So if you're looking for any of this, I would urge you to go to squarespace.com to get a free trial. And when you're ready to launch a website, you could go to squarespace.com slash slew for 10% off your first domain or website. It's an unbelievable tool. Thanks Squarespace for sponsoring the video. Oh man, I love oil painting. Really excited to have a slower video, go through a lot of the strokes. This was a two hour little study and it's sort of condensed down into about nine minutes, 10 minutes, but we still go through the main steps and it's really fun for me to sort of walk you through my thinking, some of the mixing. So let's just dive in. Um, I start portraits many different ways. Sometimes I like to block out the background. Sometimes I like to start, you know, with the face, the skin tones. Um, for this, you know, it's a pretty dark background and sometimes getting the value of the, the background in, it helps, you know, sort of discover the rest of the values because I'm not working with a toned uh, middle ground. This is a white piece of paper. So everything seems quite dark on the white piece of paper. So we're trying to get to this, um, this darker starting image, which helps everything else. It's also quite simple. You know, again, you have to remember the idea of this exercise. We're just studying. We're just sketching. This is nothing serious. There's no wrong answers here. We're just trying to have fun, do our best, of course, learn, practice, but um, just get the hours in over the easel and holding a paintbrush. So pretty standard background couple values, little halo around. Uh, of course, a big issue with master copying, 
is I'm not in front of this painting, the Rembrandt painting while I'm painting, um, and the photos online aren't perfectly color corrected in terms of how you see it, how you see it at the museum. And then also I'm looking at this reference on a, another computer screen. So there's all this disconnect with color, contrast. Um, and so I hope the, you know, oil painting elite don't come after me for not nailing the correct values and colors. I certainly add more saturation to this, more color. Um, the painting's quite old, quite drab. Anyways, we want to talk about sort of just the technique and learning from an awesome portrait. So I really just think of it basically like, for example, this hair. We had a, a one value, get as close as we can, and then we're just going in with a little darker value just to give it volume. Um, the main focal point of this painting is the face, of course, where the most light is illuminated and reflecting off into our eyes. So the hat, basically one value, you know, of black. Just a little, 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 little 1% of white in there. Um, and then this hair, you can see, it's quite, uh, quite simple. I'm not getting detailed with some of the minute curls, but just a couple colors and values and we're moving right on to the face generally I want to stick warm so I started with almost two orange of an orange for the shadow side of the face it's sort of a good idea and from my experience to nail a couple of these accents and accents are like the darkest parts you could say so we got the core shadow or drop shadow of the nose we got the eyeballs and some of the eyelid creases I just, you know, tend to start with those. There's no rhyme or reason. And then pretty sloppily, we're just adding in natural skin tones in the shadows. And, you know, again, there's millions of skin tones. There's no correct skin tones, but some basic ones are, you know, browns, gray greens, gray purples, but generally this is warm. So we're sticking with gray greens, drab browns, um, really, really gray reds, especially in the nose, you'll see. But the, the main second stage, I'd say, of this painting is adding that, that lighter. So we're using a lot of white, titanium white, again, in the Zorn palette. Um, so we're limited, which I think helps with color harmony. But once you start adding white, that's when sort of, I think, the painting kicks in gear, in my opinion. And we're covering the face with this really sort of not tasteful color. It's sort of like a gray egg um i don't know what color you'd say that but um it, these are all just sort of grounded colors to get the get the light of the face started um and you also have to remember two hours we're going quite fast here as well as quite small of portrait you could see these very small paint brushes i'm using um and that is fun sometimes for me sometimes it's annoying it depends um, I don't paint this small often, but it's sort of fun because the smaller the painting, the more information you could sort of um, display with one paint stroke. Value, line weight, hue, chroma, all these things. So even my smallest paintbrush, they're making pretty big marks on the painting. And so we're sort of really representing just the major shapes like that awesome shadow under the lip, this really square shadow. I'm fixing the neck here. This is just proportionally I messed up or lost. So we're bringing that neck back so it looks a little more, you know, anatomically correct. But, you know, for example, that shadow right under the nose, it's really simple. It's just like a line of uh, brownish orange. And that's just represents, you know, the turning of the nose. And that's sort of like a lot of the theme of this is how little of strokes can we get to represent so much. And that's my favorite thing. It's like a puzzle. Uh, the entire painting thus far has looked not great, you know, quite ugly, quite not close to the uh, this auctioneer that Rembrandt or his Rembrandt's disciples painted. But once you add this little mustache, it really starts bringing it together, I think. And it's super subtle. Um, and you'll see it's sort of like 80% groundwork, trying to figure out values, couple placements, major shapes. And now we're just picking with a very small paintbrush uh, the highlights. We're going to mold some of this paint around to change a couple edges and tiny, tiny little things that bring the likeness of this 
portrait, I think, to the forefront. Some major highlights here. And so it's just really fun, I think. You know, again, if you're just sort of committing to two hours, which really isn't that long, should be doing like three or four of these a week, um, you have this time frame to just not be worried about mistakes, not be worried about perfection, and just create and build upon um, the drawing that I had underneath. And that's, I think, the most important thing for practice. Uh, but, you know, it's really taking shape now. In these last couple steps you know the last 20 minutes is really when it comes together i think you know we obviously have a lot of orange in here that's not in the real painting and the bright red lips but this is just me having fun being like all right let's put some red in there so i'm um, not taking myself too seriously but also trying to be as accurate as possible you know really boldening making those eyelids more bold helps a lot with drawing you to the eye i think um, and the, the crease under the lips, these are all just final things that I think really bring it together again. Um, and I was, I was happy with this. It's not the best thing I ever did, but I, I enjoyed this painting session. I thought I got close. And again, in my art practice, in my opinion, getting hours in and having fun so that you come back to the easel and paint more is the most important part. So in that regard, it was successful. Um, hopefully you enjoyed this whole walkthrough leave some comments if you have any questions. Um, there's a bunch of other videos like these on my channel you could check out, but um, yeah, not a perfect resemblance, but pretty close. And again, pretty great and successful for two hours. See you in the next video.